Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Bursa webinar number nine, how to identify a sunset stock. Uh, first of all, I want to take this opportunity to thank everybody for coming online, for spending your precious evening with us. And uh, before I uh, proceed further, just want to check if my audio is working fine. So if you can hear me on the control panel, could you please click raise the hand button? Well, I think bef before I even say this, some of you already raise your hand. Okay, if you can hear me, could you please raise your hand? Okay. Okay, let me see. Okay, looks like majority of you can hear me now. All right, excellent. You may put down your hands now. Okay, excellent. Now, this webinar is brought to you by Bursa Malaysia, and in this topic, we are going to talk about how we can identify a sunset stock. And at the end of the day, you know what are sunset stock and what factor cause sunset stock, how you can uh, avoid one if you see one. So, uh, this webinar series is uh, we have a series of it which have covered from the earlier this year until now. And then, uh, disclaimer first, and whatever we share in this webinar is mainly for educational purpose only. So, you know whether we give any recommendation for any stock or we give sell recommendation to any stock as well. So, uh, we only discuss it on the um, educational purpose only. If you decide to buy any stock or sell any stock, you do it at your own financial risk. Okay, now as mentioned earlier, this is a series and uh, we have now come to the ninth series, how to identify a sunset stock. And uh, uh, next month we have the uncover the myth of oil and gas industry. Okay, if you want to see, uh, hear the previous webinar, you can go to um, I will send you the link so you can access the previous webinars. Now, this webinar is 90 minutes long, so whereby we will allocate some time for the question and answer session as well. Now, without further ado, let me introduce our speaker for today. Now, if you have followed our previous webinar, PC is no longer a stranger to you, and he is a graduate of NUS in 1989, and he is a author, a best-selling author for two books in which invest in REITs reached the popular top 10. Uh, best sellers. Okay, now he has had about 20 over years of experience in investing. Now, now I want to hand over the floor to PC. All right, let me just give you the control. PC, take it over. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Shane, and thank you to all listeners who are listening in. Um, today we'll talk about how to identify a sunset stock. Yeah, you need to and, on your um, share your screen. Okay, hold on a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have an amazing turnout today. Okay, thank you everybody for coming. Yeah, the sign just came on. Okay. You have my screen now? Yeah, I'm seeing your screen now. Okay. Okay, excellent. Okay. So yeah, today we'll talk about how to identify a sunset stock, uh, where we'll talk about the definition of a sunset stock, then uh, understanding the characteristics of a sunset stock, learn how to identify and avoid sunset stocks, and learn the factors that contribute to the downturn of a company, and what are the potential threat to current industries. So definition of a sunset stock. Now, a sunset stock is a company that has entered into a phase of continuing weak performance, with deterioration in earnings and balance sheet becoming more pronounced with the passing of each financial year due to a failing business model, management failure to arrest an industry-wide problem or problems, and change in consumer behavior, technology, or government policy which render the business model obsolete. Now, I think uh, some of the uh, biggest uh, change, I think, would be the change from uh, the digital media in photography, uh, I mean, change from the normal film printing, you know, in digital, for, um, in normal photography to digital for photography, which uh, normally now people um, uh, save their pictures in the cloud or, or in their own uh, hard disk, okay, and not printing as many photos as they used to. Now, this uh, spelled the end for Kodak film, okay, um, and they actually declared bankrupt. And this, this is the most um, uh, greatest example, 
okay, of a change in consumer behavior and technology. Yeah. So, um, and one of the most challenged um, uh, business right now, uh, which is also due to the emergence of uh, e-commerce as well as uh, digital uh, media, which are now challenging uh, the normal brick and mortar retail business and those in the print media, okay, where, you know, people used to buy um, newspapers, magazines, okay, but right now they are easily accessible through various alternate news media, okay, and it's free, okay, although sometimes uh, certain, certain uh, uh, print media they do allow for some small token of a uh, subscription yeah but uh, the print media is uh, very widely challenged nowadays yeah but one thing you must know that a uh, sunset stock may continue languishing with weak earnings and does not necessarily signify an immediate bankruptcy so you know a sunset stock doesn't mean that if you if you see a sunset stock okay uh, that stock is destined for bankruptcy no, sometimes a sunset, uh, sunset stock may be uh, in very low, um, low value for a very long time, and suddenly there may be a ch change that is on the positive side. Perhaps they would change their entire business model, okay, and then suddenly that becomes a turnaround stock, okay. So um, uh, these are some change that may occur uh, down the road, but um, in the in the immediate future, okay, and for, to the medium term, as long as they are uh, in the same business, okay, but there's no change in the business model, there's no change in the in in the way that they conduct their processes and so on. That stock may continue to languish uh, in the low value range, and that's why it's uh, it's called a sunset stock. Yeah. So um, important to note that the stock at this stage will not return to its heyday of its performance due to the reasons stated above. Now, one of the things I want to talk about today is uh, Asia Media Group, um, uh, which I will discuss uh, with, the, with you whether uh, this can be defined as a sunset, uh, sunset stock. Now, this is the uh, chart of uh, Asia Media Group. You can see that um, throughout, the, uh, throughout the years, they have um, raised a lot of money Okay, uh, just so that they protect their uh, balance sheet ratios, they issue a lot of rights and warrants, okay, so that they do not need to borrow a lot of money, okay. So, but after adjusting for consolidations, rights and warrants, Asia Media closed on the first day of trading at 70 cents. Okay, this is after adjustment, not on the, not exactly the same value that they traded uh, on the first day, but after adjusting everything, um, uh, it is uh, it closed on the first day of trading at uh, 70 cents. But as at 13 October 2017, its price stood at only 10 cents. Now that's a 85.6, 85 85.7% uh, drop in the in its price since listing. Okay. So even the in the same year, uh, it has a 52 week low of 7 cents and a 52 week high of 27 cents. I think currently now it's languishing around uh, 10 plus cents now. Okay. Uh, hovering around the the, the, the teens, okay. So characteristics of a sunset stock. Now, earnings will continue to weaken year on year with no respite anticipated in the coming years. Uh, this has a lot to do with the kind of industry that the company is, uh, is in, okay. It could be uh, due to same business model down through the years with no change in sight. Okay, and it has poor cash flow from operating activities, poor balance sheet, which may require further fundraising. Okay, uh, this could be in terms of borrowing, which would then um, to prop up the balance sheet, which would then increase its uh, debt to equity ratio. Okay, or it could be through dilution by selling more new shares, uh, issuing calls, warrants, and all those all those stuff. Yeah, so its share price will continue to be very depressed. And normally it's shunned by uh, all investors because um, if the company continuously having big earnings, uh, investors would not be interested at all. Now, we look at weak revenue and earnings, how it all began. When revenue and or earnings continue to be weak, despite remedial actions taken by the management, it is a sign of a deeper problem within the company or industry. 
if let's say the management uh, have come up plans that they say that would should arrest the problem but if that problem persists that, um uh uh it's a surface problem that it could be a company wide problem and a lot to do with management or it could be an industry that is uh you know seeing the seeing the uh the slowdown okay and uh that slowdown could be a permanent slow slowdown unless the company changes business model altogether so sometimes uh, when company sees a weak and uh, weak earnings they would resort to cost cutting but cost cutting cost cutting is only a short-term measure you cannot cut your manpower to zero or you cannot cut your expenses um um into you know very very um you know like you are cutting your marketing expenses down to the barest minimum but without marketing how is a company going to sell their product so there's only a certain mesh certain uh limit that a company can embark on cost cutting okay most importantly the company needs to grow the revenue because resorting to 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 cost cutting is always a short-term measure um no matter what a company still need to be run by the people with certain expertise yeah so sometimes revenue growth occurs in um in a sunset stock but earnings still re remain weak now when you see that it's normally because a company is sacrificing margins for revenue growth uh, but these are often not sufficient to offset the kind of expenses that the company uh, is facing so look for continued deterioration in revenue and or earnings as signs falling cash flow and impact now companies of such a uh, category often sees a uh, consistent weak cash flow from their operating activities because and what we see is that when cash flow is weak company may have to raise funds to continue its operations and this could be detrimental to its balance sheet or to the share price if let's say they decide to issue new shares yeah so look out for signs of persistent weak cash flow from the operating activities okay balance sheet and very prevalent is the destruction of equity now when a company faces tremendous losses and its ability to meet current liabilities commitment okay these are the measures that a company would normally take the issue new shares rights or warrants to raise funds through borrowings from financial institutions this could result in a higher gearing ratio now heavy losses will impact upon a company's equity as does heavy borrowings so what you will see is that um, the company's equity okay will continue to deteriorate so look for signs of destruction in the equity so in this uh, segment we'll talk about asia media group okay now it is a leading digital out of home transit tv company offering the following services high quality infotainment targeted advertising it has a uh, 3,993 LCD screens installed in 1,800 buses traveling in the market-centric hubs of Klang Valley and Johor Bahru. Uh, recently, it has diversified into oil palm plantation business in Sarawak through a buyout of 155 land owners in early 2017. Let's look at its uh, financial highlights. You can see that apart from 2017 which uh, up to the six months financial year but for the full financial year since 2013 to 2016 you can see that there's heavy decline in the revenue okay and in the gross profit and the uh, um, normally I will overlook the EBITDA because um, EBITDA is a very as I mentioned those who have followed me for for the last few web webinars I often say that EBITDA often um, you know they do not take into account of uh, interest rate um, uh, which normally occur if let's say a company has heavy financing cost okay or depreciation if the company has a uh, uh, investment into equipment okay so I normally do not take a very um, close scrutiny on the EBITDA rather I will look at the uh, earnings okay as um, the total net profit itself now you can see that um, it's Net profit is actually very inconsistent. It made money in 2013, it lost money in 2014, and in 2015, it lost even greater, 2016 as well, and 2017, they finally made back some money. Okay, so you can see that the deterioration in revenue is 
already a huge red flag. Yeah? But then when you see even the destruction in the uh, gross profit, yeah, especially from 2013 to 2016, you will know that the company's primary business, which is providing infotainment, you know, is now being challenged, okay, and it's in rapid decline. So if we want to sum up all the uh, last five years, okay, you, the company total loss is 136.18 million, whereas the total net profit generated, okay, out of those five years, okay, is uh, 5.755 million. So you can see that whatever the losses here, here, and here, okay, overwhelms the profit that is earned in this year and in this year, okay. So uh, when you trade off the other thing, the company still lost quite heavily, okay, about 100 and, um, and um, 30.4 or so million, okay, which is quite huge. So we look at its operating cash flow. Again, it's very inconsistent, okay. We have negative cash flow here, positive, positive, then negative. And then finally positive. Um, well, it is um, it is um, inconsistent, okay. And there are bursts of positive cash flow as well as negative. We can only um, summarize it as um, it is unable to continuously generate positive cash flow from its operating activities. Let's look at its balance sheet ratios and equity. Now you can see that its current ratio looks very healthy, yeah? especially um, in the early stage, the current ratio is 28, you know, but then it gradually deteriorated, okay? Still, it is above the one to one ratio, okay, which means uh, it still have uh, current assets that is able to meet the uh, current liabilities uh, commitment within the 12-month uh, period. Its debt to equity ratio looks very, very low, okay? Uh, because the company does not borrow money, rather, okay, you, they go through about it through raising um, funds through is new shares issue warrants and such. So that caused the share price to dilute greatly, okay, while protecting the debt to equity ratio being in the low. But then when you look at its total equity, you can see, you know, it's in a decline until 2017 year to date which is there's a slight uptake, but during 2013 to 2016, the total equity loss is very, very huge. Okay, we are looking at almost uh, uh, 120 million, you know, of loss in the equity in just four years here. Okay, so um, what Asia Media does is they issue new shares, rights and warrants to buffer its heavy losses. Okay, help to keep the balance sheet ratios in order, but the losses have been tremendous in the equity. You now, since 2013, the equity has fallen by 83.6% in value. Uh, this is a very troubling thing because normally, if you want to see, a, if a company wants to see its share price increase, it not only needs to demonstrate that it can grow revenue and earnings, okay, uh, beating the market expectations um, by, by, by very high percentages, but also a growth in the equity because revenue and and net profit growth is only certain 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 uh, part that people would consider, but people also would want to see there's an increase in the equity because the asset value needs to grow so that people can always re-rate the company to a much higher uh, price position. But with this destruction in the equity, it actually becomes a huge turnoff because um, the company is not growing its equity at all. Then, we, if we look at the known facts, there's 85.7% drop in price since listing after adjustments. Total net loss of uh, 136 million versus a total net profit of uh, 5.755 million since 2013. Total net loss is actually about 131 million, okay? Not achieving consistent positive cash flow from operating activities. Equity value has fallen 83%. Since 2013, um, in July, the management aborted a cash call after the stock tank. So the management wants to continue with the same practice of diluting the share price even further. In July, when they say they wanted to issue, okay, uh, ask the investors to to buy to to buy new uh, more shares that they are going to issue, okay. But then when the share price fell, 
they decided to call it off. So that's, that goes to show that the company is lacking ideas, okay, in terms of how to support its business. Because all the while they've been raising money through dilution, so they continue to do so even though the market is sending a signal, please don't do so because the equity value has fallen a lot. You know, but they still want to push it further until the investors all decide to, you know, to 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 show their displeasure, and then the company finally call it off. Okay, so that that goes to show that, um, um, of course, in my opinion, okay, that the management, you know, has gone through the same process over and over again that they think that uh, they could pull this one off yet once again, but then the shareholders actually uh, rebel against that, okay, or revolt against that idea. So when we look at the price action results and implications, okay, the hefty decline in price of Asia media share is a signal why investors will continue to avoid investing in the company. Okay, it, it becomes a turn off. Heavy losses incurred since 2013 is a signal that the business model is failing and it remains to be seen how the venture into the palm oil plantation business will help. Management is on crisis management mode after it aborted to raise funds from existing shareholders. It points to shareholders having had enough of the dilution in the value of their shares and sends a strong signal to the management. The destruction of equity since 2013 does not provide the confidence to new investors to invest in the company. So these are what we can see, okay, looking at certain known facts. So when you want to, when you want to, um, study a company whether you know is this a sunset stock or a turnaround stock you need to look into all this okay what that what is actually going to deter people from investing right so infotainment business on board public transport now this is their core business um they advertise very strongly on their website that they have the Malaysia books of records, you know, on the most LCD screen. Uh, but sometimes all these are just, um, I would call, uh, surface propaganda, okay? And it belies the, belies the kind of um, uh, real problem that, that normally a company would face. Now, infotainment and advertisement on what public transport business model will be continued to, uh, will continue to be very challenging. And I'm going to tell you why. Now, if you ever have the occasion to hop on board any public transport, just see how many persons are glued to their mobile handsets versus the number of people on board. I can, I can very easily tell you it's between 70 to 80%. Nowadays, when people have nothing to do, they, their eyes would just go to their handsets. Either they go into their messaging, their Facebook, or they play uh, games on their handset. Okay. And hardly anyone would see the kind of advertisement on board uh, this kind of uh, public transport. Maybe tourists, they will see if let's say there are certain information, okay, being made available. Now, if we take out those amount of people that are glued to their handsets, out of those who are not glued to their mobile sets, look at those who are engaging in conversation with another person. Now, when we talk to another person, our eyes would not flicker to what is being played in the in the LCD screen, okay, or any advertisements because our conversation is focused with the other person, okay. So if we have those, if we take out those number of people that are glued to the handsets, the number of people who are engaged in a conversation with one another, how many are actually staying tuned to see what the LCD TV says, okay? So ultimately, advertisers will need to see an ROI, okay, and if let's say you know how much they spend on those public transport you know it's not being translated into into the kind of um, uh, uh, returns from their investment into that advertisement okay uh, they would sooner pull it off you know pull out the advertisement so that's why you can see that um, uh, this is my opinion because i'm relating it to the fall in revenue in terms of their core business and the deterioration in gross profit. So my own summation of what is happening is that it's becoming very, very 
difficult to retain customers to continue to continue to uh you know advertise on board their public transport um infotainment system so that's why they need to make it more attractive for the for their clients so that they continue to advertise and, and therefore they have to slash the gross uh, their margins so that they will continue to advertise but you know this is this is um this is a business model which earlier i say okay even if you have revenue growth but if you are slashing your margins it's not going to help if let's say your expenses are not going uh to be lowered okay and you know even there's growth in revenue but without the margin you will still have not enough money okay to actually reinvest or to reward the shareholders so based on what i know okay from the financial statement and what i observe some in a lot of public transport you know i can come to that uh, uh summary okay this is my opinion but it is worthwhile if you are ever in a public transport system do look at the people how many people are in a mobile phone how many people are actually you know studying the kind of um, advertisement on board you know the the public transport system you know another thing that i like to observe is like when you go to when i go to a restaurant okay you can see how many people are actually you know glued to their handsets sometimes you have a family having dinner together but almost everyone you know is playing their handset then you will know that we are now in a society that is more individualistic okay than being more sociable okay our social uh, functions normally revolve around the handset so uh, this is this is a this is a trend okay and it could be very disruptive for those people that um that is in the business of you know advertising to the masses you know to to the to you know like asia asia media's kind of a business model okay so then th about the oil palm and biodiesel hype now a lot of people right to say that hey you know uh plantation business is good okay because that's the uh that's the biodiesel angle to look at okay but i think the biodiesel is overhyped why now let me share with you the eu china and india are already planning to cut emissions over the next decade or so and working towards a deadline to ban combustion engine vehicles altogether okay so um if you go to some of the international news media business media you will realize that a lot of companies now are working towards electrical vehicles called evs or hybrid electrical vehicles called hevs okay now even Volvo itself says that by 2019, all their vehicles would be combination of either electrical vehicle or hybrid electric vehicle. GM has all the while been the strong engines, okay, with tremendous horsepower because theirs is a combustion engine. Says that in the next few years, they will continue to introduce new models that will be electric vehicles, okay? So when you look at China, China has 300 million licensed drivers. They have 250 million cars right now in China. Now, if they decide that within a deadline of five years or 10 years or eight years from now to change all into electric vehicles, how much will their demand for oil, petrol, petrol as a medium to you know to 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 burn to start a car because there's no more combustion engine okay everyone will be going towards um combination of if let's say hybrid electric vehicle yes there'll be still some con uh uh consumption of petrol but if let's say it's a full electric vehicle that's not going to be um going to be uh any petrol consumption at all of course uh, some people would like to argue that hey you know yeah the, you will be you will be charging your car batteries but electricity is still consume fossil fuel and that's why uh crude oil and diesel would be would be used to generate electricity okay but it is not entirely true okay um which i will share with you later okay so what we are seeing now is a trend to move towards hybrid vehicles and it's going to be a new norm okay 
conversion to into hybrid and full-fledged electric vehicles would put a ceiling on the oil price because previously we have a lot of cars that consumes petrol but when that's when the consumption of petrol falls okay oil price would also fall because right now oil price is being driven because of consumption by vehicles more than the than the consumption uh, through burning of fossil fuel to generate electricity because to generate electricity okay it's not just burning fossil fuel in fact um the country with the highest consumption of uh, fossil fuel is united states and china okay united states um is one country that is now fighting against global warming okay and they uh, still insist that burning fossil fuel is a viable solution but even that they are now shifting from being uh, solid fossil fuel for example like uh, like uh, diesel okay they are now shifting towards gas now gas is a kind of fossil fuel as well but when it burns it does not generate as much um, as much carbon dioxide versus um, you know if you burn diesel or petrol okay to generate electricity but in a lot of new industries okay people are moving towards free energy source such as uh, geothermal now what is geothermal geothermal is when um, uh, they utilize um, the heat from in from deep inside the ground okay they will sink pipes into the earth so that the heat from inside okay could be used to warm the house during winter and it all action uh, and it's all passed through a compressor which will then change the pressure accordingly so that it can be used for cooling during summer and warming during winter and people are moving towards wind energy you can see that's a lot of wind tower being erected okay and you know as long as there's wind they can generate power and then the sea as well the sea is one of the uh, latest that enters into the foray because all tides okay the sea have have uh, have tides okay that that rise and fall so they have those that that detects the rise and fall of the tide to generate electricity as well then that's solar now solar energy now is becoming the norm okay and the photovoltaic cells are becoming more efficient okay photovoltaic are those uh, small small panels that you see on the solar panel that and combined together they become uh the the the, the piece that collects the solar energy and convert them into electricity so uh, photovoltaic cells they are becoming more and more efficient and therefore they are pushing the price per unit of energy much lower because of that efficiency not only that um, countries like china they are now converting biomass okay into energy now biomass could be those um, organic stuff that are in the sewage system okay or those organic um, uh, uh, stuff that are being disposed of so once the uh, organic matter whether it's from the sewage or from disposal areas okay they are compressed okay and then they can be used to burn for energy okay so this is called recycling so with all this you know um, free energy that is available the notion that you need biodiesel to generate electricity you know um, as the as one of the uh, most um, uh, uh, potential to generate electricity is just a myth okay it's just a hype okay because the world now is changing towards free energy um, uh, even water is also so free energy because that's uh, hydroelectric dams okay they use um, the uh, movement in wind in the water and the heat from the solar heat from the earth okay to generate electricity so you know it's a uh, it's a uh, uh, it's overhyped when you just mentioned biodiesel you know as a as a as a very good alternate energy source now recycling of energy is gaining popularity okay because it tells the people that we are going to improve the environment okay we are not allowing a lot of organ this 
organic matters to be disposed on fields and all those, okay, but we are recycling them, okay. Now, agro-based energy use is being challenged by advocates of environmental friendly uh, and also environmental protect, uh, protectionism groups because it takes large swaths of land to convert agro-based product into sustainable fuel source, land which could be used for food production. Like, you know, uh, in US, when oil was hovering around 140 US dollar per barrel, suddenly they convert a lot of corn fields into ethanol, okay, ethanol, that, uh, which could be used to burn for fuel. Then they realized one thing, it takes up so much corn just to generate that amount of ethanol that, you know, that kind of, that kind of uh, amount of corn could easily feed so many people. So that's why now the idea of, of bio or agro-based kind, of, um, uh, kind of energy is being challenged by a lot of people because you have to cut down forests, you have to cut down um, uh, virgin lands, okay, just to expand your agriculture and you use it to burn fuel, okay, um, as, a, as an alternate fuel source, which also generate large amount of carbon dioxide. Okay, because diesel and petrol, ethanol, all those generate um, a lot of carbon dioxide. So even in China, where previously there are large, um, there are large uh, reliance on uh, coal as a fuel source because of the pollution in China right now, they even limit that the uh, that the coal energy plant, coal-based energy plant, they have a certain tariff. If they have met that tariff, they are not able to burn any more coal for that period. Okay, so that's why they have to do controlled burning of coal to generate electricity. Meanwhile, the government is actually increasing the level of uh, of um, uh, environmental policy and environmental protection policy. Okay, to restrict um, unnecessary burning of um, fossil fuel and pushing the people to look into green technology. So what this spells for Asia media. Now, infotainment and advertisement revenue will continue to decline as seen, as seen by the steady fall in revenue and earnings since 2013. Oil palm investment may provide a temporary respite. Okay, the company issued a cash call, which is later abandoned. The balance sheet could take a hit in the coming quarters. Okay, because by right, the cash call was supposed to help improve the uh, the the balance sheet. Okay, but since they call it off, that company could be, you know, their the company's balance sheet could be could be hit. Okay, in coming quarters. Now, interestingly. You know, palm oil has gone up only 0.86% in US dollar terms as at 2nd of November 2017 this year, whereas US dollar has fallen almost 9% in value. Normally, a weaker US dollar will translate into a higher price for oil palm, okay? But it is not happening. So why is this not happening? Because likelihood, because of a lot of uh, plantation, okay, in the uh, in the region, okay, often face the weather phenomenon of La Lina and El, Lin El Nino. So what they do is that in order to stabilize the price, okay, and just to ensure that during the period of uh, weak harvesting, they actually expanded the farmland. So that's why what we are seeing now, okay, even if the U.S. dollar is weaker. It's not you know, pushing the price higher because there's a lot of harvesting right now, which means they have stabilized the differences okay, in the weather uh, phenomenon that normally comes up with weaker harvesting and so on. And they are able to, you know, in a weaker harvesting, by having larger farmlands, they are able to have more fruit bunches okay, to meet that lower harvesting that previously they endured. Okay, so right now, you know, we, we don't see a lot of heavy price movements anymore. Then the other thing, ringgit has also strengthened against the US dollar. Okay, normally, if let's say US dollar is strong and the 
price of the uh, of oil pump, okay, is um, let's say uh, is steady. But if ringgit is weak, then it could be translated for higher earnings in and revenue in terms of ringgit. But if let's say ringgit has strengthened against US dollar, for that kind of fixed US dollar price range, the amount of revenue and earnings generated, okay, would be much lower in terms of ringgit value. So this is a sign that oil palm plantations have grown in size with many more new entrants into the market due to its low barrier of entry. So, you know, you just need to clear land, you move in with your, you know, you plant, you, you plant the oil palm and then uh, within a few short years, it could be harvested. Okay, this, put, this could put a cap on the price of oil palm moving forward. Okay, because there are just too many players when there's a lot of players, okay, even if there are certain, uh, in historical period, there are certain uh, there are, there are certain periods in time where harvesting could be low. Now it's being offset by having more plantations. Yeah, again, biodiesel is just a it's just a hype in a fast changing energy consumption landscape. Okay, Asia media could be mired within a tight range. Okay, at its current price for a longer period. Now what I share with you here is just my opinion. Okay, and um, and if let's say you you want to uh, uh, if you if you believe that it's not happening, also okay, you can do more research, or you can you can you can then uh, point it out to me where I've gone wrong, okay? Because again, it's an opinion. Uh, but looking at the energy trend, okay, it is fast evolving, okay, and that's why I believe that oil price uh, will still have a certain limit to its upside, okay? Because in the next decade or so, you know. Uh, oil could be much lower and therefore, you know, having biodiesel, you know, does not seem to be that kind of solution that would actually, uh, that would actually uh, uh, help to, help to actually generate a lot of uh, revenue in that sense, because demand for biodiesel would be lowered accordingly, because a lot of companies are moving into green tech, as well as a recycling kind of a, of a business model when it comes to energy. So, having talked about Asian media, let's look at fact, um, the factors contributing to a company's downturn. Now, it could be a business model that does not hold any relevance to today's consumer preference. Okay, for example, um, if uh, one of the key thing is a lot of people uh, used to look uh, used to watch TV programs. Okay. And they also buy into certain cable cable uh, cable service, okay, to watch TV and so on. But consumers now are changing towards streaming, okay. Now that change into streaming could actually cost those in the TV business, okay, especially in the uh, cable cable network, okay, to be affected in the future, okay. Now, a change in government policy can also render a business illegal, okay? Um, then there's change in technology that makes the current business model obsolete, okay? So, uh, let's say it's uh, um, uh, even in terms of manufacturing, if a certain technology comes into place, okay, it may replace that kind of uh, technology that is used for certain kind of business, okay? For example, let's look at the energy business as we discussed. Even though as technology to improve the production uh, um, of crude oil, okay? But then there's a shift in technology now towards solar energy. That could make the uh, technology, you know, in terms of refining of, uh, of, uh, of crude oil for certain target markets, okay? Um, obsolete in the future, we don't know. It could likely happen because um, the evolution of solar energy now is gaining fast, uh, very fast pace, okay? The photovoltaic cells, they are getting, they are becoming more and more efficient, okay? So much so that it's a one-time investment, okay? And we are using free energy, whereas uh, crude oil, in order to refine, you need feed from, you know, uh, feeding of crude oil. Into, into the refining system to generate that product. But in a, in a solar energy farm, okay, it's just, you know, solar energy from the, from the sun immediately convertible into electricity. 
So, but then in the in the in the using oil for electricity, you know, you need to drill for oil, uh, which I will discuss in our next webinar. Okay, I will share with you the entire process of uh, of oil discovery and such and such. Yeah, you need to drill for oil. Then you need to um, prepare for the production of oil, and then you need to uh, send the oil to be processed. Okay, convert that into a fuel, and then you burn the fuel in a plant, and and from then on, okay, it generates electricity. Electricity. Now, just imagine the kind of process with the process of just building a form, uh, a, a solar farm. Okay, using solar energy and converting that into electricity. You can see that which process is actually a shortest route. Okay, so that's why um, change in technology can make um, business model obsolete some um, um, uh, in the future. Okay, because the advancement of technology, you know, is going by leaps and bounds. Okay, and then um, certain factors could be management failure to recognize changes in trends or remains resistant to change, which could impact the business profoundly. Now, sometimes management can be very, very stubborn because of how the company has become successful in the past. They use that to reinforce their stand, okay, and refuse to change for the better in the, uh, for the better of sharehold for the better, you know, for the shareholders in the future. Because the same model has been used correctly, they continue to use it even though as times are changing. Okay, for example, we look at the evolution of e-commerce. A lot of companies, you know, they continue to grow from their retail business, but up to a certain peak level, okay, then they see declining sales. And then they, they say, no, you know, uh, all the while, uh, consumers like to feel our product. They like to, they like to uh, visit our stores, okay? Uh, they like the service of our personnel. And that is when they, uh, they get the full satisfaction, you know? But then people overlook the fact that Online uh, retailing has now gone into a next step of evolution. For example, if a person goes to a goes to a let's say a fashion boutique, they need to get this um, get this um, uh, clothing and try various sizes, try various design, okay, before they decide what they want to buy. Now, in the new realm of online retailing, in a fashion uh, retail store online, you can actually put in your your body body size here, yeah? and then you can just click use this design, click change the color, change the plan, pants, okay, or change the dress. You know, they add in a belt and so on, and you roughly know how it looks, okay, how how you will look in that in that kind of uh, clothing. So a lot of the high, a lot of the uh, retailers, they already have this kind of technology. So would this eventually um, uh, make it such that consumer would prefer to shop at home because everything that they require to look at color design, okay, and accessories will be all met online rather than needing to go to a to a retail store, okay. So now uh, technology has improved to such a level. Okay, so will this spell that um, um, the doom for physical retail store? And then because a lot of retail store unable to meet that kind of uh, business, will they be uh, closing their stores and therefore putting pressure on a lot of shopping malls? So this is a trend that I see will happen uh, in the coming years. And especially in China, um, you can see a lot of um, uh, retail store, uh, retail shopping mall that are changing with the times. Okay, uh, for example, because Ch China society is very much into online and such. So what what they are seeing, uh, what what the shopping mall doing now is that they have more international brand, uh, luxury product. Because if, if you are buying a luxury product, I think when you're spending thousands of dollars on a certain product, you want to feel the material. You want to see how good you look into it, okay? Rather than you know relying online and then you send in the package, then you know you do cannot feel the material while you are online. So they are changing into high end retail, but also changing the the shopping mall module into higher percentage of food and beverage, okay? 
focusing on food and beverage. So even the malls, they are changing towards that kind of structure. More weightage on food, okay, um, and beverage business because people still like to go out and have a good meal. Okay, so this is a trend that is changing elsewhere. We, in Malaysia, it could happen um, if, let's say, uh, payment system in Malaysia becomes more and more efficient online and so on. Okay, and then we have uh, big companies coming in, you know, uh, uh, with Lazada getting white presence, and then Alibaba is also coming in. Okay, that that could change the um, shopping mall environment in Malaysia uh, sometime in the future. And those retail store, physical retail store, could see a downsizing. Okay, in in the US, for example, the emergence of online. Okay, coupled with a lot of the comp a, a lot of the companies borrowing too much, you know, and not being able to re repay because of falling business. You know, just this year alone, six thousand seven hundred retail stores have actually closed in the U.S. You know, and they anticipated by this year end, it could be about eight thousand three hundred stores. Okay, which is more than the two thousand eight financial crisis. Okay, so um, so this this is how the retail situation have uh, changed ground in the US. It's changing ground in China, and I believe sometime in the future in Malaysia it could also change. Okay, and then a lot of the shopping malls, especially those retail uh, retail shopping malls which are REITs, need to change their concept in order to cater for a different type of customer target groups. Yeah. Now of course, um, when you look at all this. Uh, the biggest culprit and failure still stems from the management. They are paid high salaries and fees to protect the shareholders' interests and to deliver growth to the business. But unfortunately, a lot of them are not able to meet that kind of simple benchmark simply because, you know, sometimes they have plans that look good on paper, but when it comes to impl implementation, it falls on the weak side. Okay. So let's look at the potential threats of the future. Now, um, these are things which I look at, and uh, in the in the next few years, could have a wide um, influence on the way consumer behave, um, in the ways that certain business model may not be able to meet the challenges of the future. Now, one of the key thing is actually artificial intelligence. Nowadays, with predictive intelligence on consumer spending and preference, brand owners can market directly to the consumer, putting advertising companies at risk. Okay, so to demonstrate this, at any time you open your Facebook or your ways, you can immediately see, okay, in your Facebook, there'll always be some uh, some websites, uh, uh, some links appearing on your Facebook tells you you know what are the things to look for because somehow when you book an airline ticket going to a place or you book a hotel in a country it comes out on your facebook home page okay that you know they are they're offering you certain uh certain hotels in taiwan just so that you you, you in case you visit you have visited their website but you have not booked they give you suggestions okay and if you are traveling by ways you know, sometimes they will tell you that hey you know this restaurant is uh is near would you like um would you like to save the information and so on so that's how artificial intelligence is behaving as soon as you visit a website your database is being saved in that particular uh 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 saved in that particular uh let's say uh cloud okay so that at any point in time, okay, it will keep on bursting you with information about hotels or places of interest and so on. Because that's how artificial uh, intelligence, your, all your activities, okay, will be harvested and converted into suggestion to buy, to spend money and so forth. Yeah, so that's why um, they are already directly marketing to, to, to you, not through a to a, a advertising company, okay, or a media, in order for you to know what message they are trying, you know, to 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 read the message they are sending to you, okay. That's how artificial intelligence has advanced, 
And you know, in in a test of um, uh, medical diagnosis, artificial intelligence are now being tested. Okay, and they can immediately filter through a few hundred doctors kind of diagnosis and give you the most reliable diagnosis versus seeing one particular doctor and he give you a diagnosis okay telling that you are so and so and so and so and suddenly you feel very scared and afraid that what is said in the diagnosis is very true you have to see a second doctor okay to let him give a second opinion now when you see two doctors to get a second opinion whether that diagnosis is the same, if the same, then it means it could be very true, okay? But if it's differ, then would you go to a, another third doctor to seek another opinion so that now it's two versus one, then you know which one is true. But if let's say with artificial intelligence, they can filter through hundreds of records of doctor diagnosis and give you a percentage that that is most reliable what is happening. Now, this could spell the end of a lot of medical practitioners here. And even in artificial intelligence, what if in the future, okay, you want to buy certain properties, okay, immediately there's a standard uh, sales and purchase agreement. You need not even need the presence of a lawyer. So lawyers in that segment of property could be obsolete, okay? It could happen because everything is AI based. They can tell you, based on the laws of that particular country and so on, everything is there. So that is why artificial intelligence could result in tremendous loss of jobs for a lot of people, okay? Because, you know, like in the, in the case of medical diagnosis, instead of a few doctors right now, they can go through with a few hundred doctors and cheaper through because it's all at the press of a button, okay? To give you the best diagnosis, okay? The other thing, electric vehicles will be the norm combustion engine manufacturers either change with the flow or to die off okay i need to change that so they either change with the flow or die off because if what we are seeing now in the eu um, what I'm seeing now in the EU, the uh, um, a lot of the European countries would be combustion engine free by 2030. Now, how far is 2030? It's just about 12 years plus away, okay? And by 2025, some countries in the EU even adopted five years ahead of schedule to actually ban combustion engine. So that's why a lot of the, the electric vehicles revolution would be the norm and it's going to continue, okay? And because it, start, it starts at a very low level, for example, um, percentage of um, electric vehicles versus the total number of motor vehicles in the world is just only about 1%. But because it starts from a very low end, it can double or triple every two, every, every two or three years, okay? And then it grows very fast and, you know, Every, every time it grows double or triple, you know, then the percentage will continue to rise very fast, okay? So that is why if car manufacturers decide that they will remain fossil-based vehicle, the combustion engine vehicle, then they would be behind the curve. And when everyone has shifted to electric vehicle, then only they realize, hey, let's, let's shift towards that, okay? So then that would be the failure of the company to change with the norm, okay? Now, the other thing is green tech and free energy source will be at the forefront of innovation, okay? Because um, like just about a little bit uh, early of this decade, you know, we talk about wind tower, we talk about solar energy, okay? But right now, people are looking at geothermal energy, okay? and it's now being heavily promoted okay uh in countries like china uh using the uh and in iceland where they use geothermal uh energy okay to warm the house in 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 winter and to cool the house in summer okay and then the revolution of photovoltaic cells uh in solar 
in solar cells, okay, that they can actually harvest energy at much greater efficiency, okay. So with all this kind of evolution, and it will continue because um, once the innovation starts, okay, it will continue to be driven to greater and greater efficiencies until a certain peak is reached. Okay, and when we see that the emergence of greater green tech and greater evolution utilizing free energy source, then all companies will see lower revenue and earnings and many will not survive. Why? Now you imagine that, um, just as an example, okay, uh, in the next webinar, when we talk about oil and gas, you will have a better idea. Now an onshore, uh, sorry, an offshore well costs around 200 million to 650 million to drill if let's say it is deep water well. With 650 million, how much solar energy can you harvest by investing in solar panels? Okay, now if you drill that 200 million or 650 million offshore well, there is no guarantee that you will find commercially a viable oil. And that's what happened when Shell started drilling in the Arctic and then they realized they have to wipe off, I think, more than a billion dollars because they can't find commercially viable oil. Now, if that one billion dollars spent to, you know, spent in the Arctic to look for oil which never, that is never commercially viable, and that one billion is spent on solar panels, can you imagine how much energy is, you know, could be used, um, could be used to convert into electricity? So that is why, you know, oil drilling is a very Capital, very high capital intensive exercise versus if you install solar farms, okay, it's just a one time off investment. Yeah. So uh, that's why um, green tech and free energy source will always move forward, especially now that China government is encouraging all, all these sectors to move ahead. Okay, like in the recent uh, uh, Communist Party Congress, they stress on quality, not quantity. Now, how will this impact? On Malaysia, well, there may not be much market for biodiesel in the future, okay? Because people, uh, countries all over the world are not looking at, you know, burning fossil fuel or um, organic fuel, but rather look at free energy source, okay? So it could impact Malaysian companies to that sense, yeah. Then cable TV pay-per-view TV and movie rental business will die off as consumers opt for streaming. So if uh, certain companies, they are now into selling uh, DVDs or, or Blu-ray Blu -ray discs, uh, you know, CDs and so on, you know, that could be a sunset business because um, people will go for streaming because right now the internet advancement have made, um, have made, uh, uh, the streaming of uh, movies and all those much faster, okay? Downloading of, uh, of um, movies, songs, and all those much faster, okay? Versus, you know, you have to pay for um, cable TV, and you know, it's like, you know, if you are, you know, you watch a cable TV, you know, what is shown on the half day is repeated on the, on the second half of the day, okay? So your, your entertainment value is only met for half the day, but if you are able to do streaming, okay? Uh, you know, you, you wait for a full complete episode, you know, or you go to Netflix, you can just, you know, within two days, you can see the entire season already, you know, so your time will be more well spent, okay, uh, to focus on certain, certain, uh, if you're very into entertainment, you can stream and stream and stream and watch as many as you like, rather than you watch half the day, then the next day you wait, you, you watch another half a day, okay, so that's why cable TV, pay-per-view TV, all this, you know, is going to be challenged by more efficient streaming and more adoption into streaming, uh, 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 streaming for movies, okay, or storage in cloud, okay, rather than buying a physical um, DVD or buying a physical Blu-ray, okay, because when you buy something that is physical as an item, you need storage space. But if let's let's say you are able to to download a movie, okay, and, and store in the cloud, and you have paid for the movie. Okay, then when it's stored in the cloud, it's okay. You know, you can always use you can always um, uh, use back your account and retrieve that movie for multiple viewing because it's stored in the cloud, not in your house. 
if you store in a house, you know, you need cabinets, you need this and that. Okay, so that's why certain things that are that are that um, previously require space for storage at home will no longer be required to do so because they are stored in the cloud. That's the same with um, with a lot of um, uh, companies that are involved in the stationary business. Okay, uh, and, and so forth. So when people start to move things into the cloud, okay, then you know businesses that are very into physical stuff would see uh, um, decline in certain sectors. For example, I think stationery would be challenged because uh, people will no longer require those kind of uh, uh, a hard filing system and so on. Okay, and it can be easily retrievable by streaming. Okay. So then the other thing is that print media will play an even smaller role in consumer preference for information and news. Okay. A lot of you all would now right right now would read news, okay, from uh from uh the internet rather than buying a newspaper. Okay. Now when, when you buy a newspaper and there's lesser consumer buying newspaper, that means that advertisement in those newspapers will gradually decline as well. So um, previously, people buy newspaper to look for a job. Right now, we have a, a job street. Okay, we have uh, we have we have job street to you know where you go for go go to to look for jobs. Okay, and then there are hate hunters websites that you can go to and then find out what are the jobs that are available. Okay, you don't need to pay a single cent. You know it's free. So that's why um uh this kind of things have changed. You know, for example, right now you are listening. Uh, me talking about about potential threats of the future via the internet you are not paying money to attend a seminar okay uh in a hotel okay where you need to pay for parking you know to listen to what people have to say so that's that's how technology have changed and that is why um uh uh, uh these are the things that would constantly challenge the kind of physical item based uh, market in the future now the other thing I want to talk about um, is online retail, okay? And I think they will continue to take sizable chunk of the retail business. Many um, may see many brick and mortar stores close, especially those that cannot cater for certain special interest group. That no matter what, you really need to fill my material, like in the luxury market, okay? You wouldn't buy a few thousand dollars. Or, or tens of uh, or or few thousand ringgit of luxury goods via the internet, okay? Because you want to make sure that you are able to fill that kind of material, okay? Or it, it, or buying a very expensive watch on the internet. Somehow we we feel that once we make that payment, okay, we have to wait for it to be shipped. You know, it kind of make us worry. But what if the shipment never comes? Okay, how are you going to claim that back? So that's why when it comes to very luxury goods, people really go to the luxury store. I pay you, I get the goods. Rather than I pay via the internet, then I wait for the expensive goods to, to come to me. So um, in that sense, I think luxury goods being in the shopping mall will continue to survive. But if let's say those that are in the ordinary business, okay, like, um, like uh, not very high-end fashion, but cater for the, for the medium class uh, society or, or, or consumer, okay, then their business will be challenged because the medium, me, middle income group will forever look for savings, okay, versus the rich who have the money, they worry that their money will be lost when they buy a luxury product and they have to wait. So for the middle income owner, they always look at ways to save money. And that is why more would go for the internet, okay? And when the middle income group goes more, more and more percentage goes to the internet, you will see a decline in other business, uh, in the physical store business. Um, if, if when we talk about travel agencies, previously there's a lot of travel agencies all over. Right now, everyone is booking through the internet, okay? You don't require a travel agency to buy a ticket because you can buy it online. You don't require to book uh, to book a tour uh, through a travel travel agency because you can actually plan your itinerary and then 
buy certain packages of tours okay online so that's how it is changing okay now the other thing is blockchain which is the next big thing after the internet now blockchain um uh just just to share with you okay is now the rave in the internet world okay and many touted it as you know the biggest thing after the internet okay and many proponents of the blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies assert that it can destabilize the global financial system uh, why because everything is done outside the uh, normal uh, transaction can be done outside the normal uh, norm okay of banking institutions and such yeah so there's also the emergence of very various crypto tokens that allow for use to access to services outside the corporate norms because um, they're able to access certain services and so on at a much lower rate okay so these are the kind of things that are changing okay and it's happening right before our eyes okay especially cryptocurrency and blockchain okay so uh, study more about this and see how it can affect the future okay because it will definitely affect us okay in the i wouldn't say long term i would say very near term because um because there's going the, the 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 kind of development of this technology is moving by leaps and bounds yeah so we have reached the q a session okay excellent thank you so much pc okay um just give me a minute let me take me take back the present the control all right so if you have any Questions you may take, you may ask in the group. Okay, let me show my screen. So here am I. Are you? Okay, Q and A session. So the first question we have on it is, um, what is a cash call? Uh? Okay, so um, it is it is similar like um, uh, a rights issue. Okay, for example, um, I'm I'm writing to all the investors. Hey, I need to raise cash. Okay, it's like a calling for cash. Okay, but I'm giving you a, a rights issue. Okay, and it's going to work so much. Okay, this is this is a sim uh, simplified term Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next question is why do people still buy a sunset stock? Sometimes people buy a sunset stock with the hope that it can be a turnaround stock. Okay, so um, uh, it is always that hope that when the company, uh, because sometimes people see certain value in the company, perhaps um, like um, let's say Asia Media, some people believe that hey, you know, they are now moving into the into the plantation business. If they continue to grow their plantation business, maybe one day they become a full-fledged plantation business. And therefore, since the, it is so low price, I, I want to buy into it, okay? But then, like I say, okay, um, sometimes money spent buying uh, in, a, in a sunset store, okay, may be better if you, rather than wait even a longer time for it to really turn around eventually, you might as well look for a company that is already turning around. Then that is that, that will be more beneficial uh, uh, kind of investment yeah okay now um the next question is other than financial information and news can technical analysis show a clear sign of a sunset stock i think when it comes to technical technical analysis may um, just tell you the price movement but a sunset stock will be very much determined by a company's business model okay and the underlying fundamentals so um like if let's say certain certain um uh fall in commodity commodity let's say um that's a that's a fall in the commodity price okay of uh, oil palm of course all the plantation will actually fall accordingly but how would you know that you know it's going to be a it's going to be a sunset you know some plantations may be a sunset some plantations may not if let's say that that plantation is suddenly heavily indebted okay that could still be a sunset uh, stock because they cannot pay their pay off their 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 debts. So you have to be very careful. It's still back to financial analysis as a well fundamental analysis rather than just look at the price action. Okay. So 
the next question is on um, palm oil. So do you mean that palm oil is a sunset industry? But there are two main applications that cannot be replaced by carbon-free energy. First is cooking oil. Second is oil chemicals such as manufacturing or soup, of soup. Yeah, oil palm is not a sunset industry. Now I'm using I'm using uh, Asian media as an example because their core business is like a sunset industry. Okay, I'm just saying that when when people start to overhype about palm oil, okay, especially in a biodiesel, don't easily fall for it. Okay, yes, palm oil will forever be used for cooking oil, okay, because that there's, there's demand for it. Okay, and secondly, for a lot of um, uh, petrochemical related kind of uh, I, I mean for chemical related kind of uh, uh, industry okay where it's being used for example candles for example uh, soap and all those yes you know those are thriving industry okay and and some of the uh, some of the, the uh, biomass from from palm oil could be used to generate uh, 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 energy as well so palm oil is not a sunset industry but a company that is um, for example in this case Asia media you know um, they have huge decline in their equity, but they are just starting into the palm oil, okay? And it's just a very small piece of plantation. Now, they already have a, um, some stress uh, in their balance sheet, okay? They have falling equity and their failure to raise money, okay? Will put pressure on that company. So will, will that company have enough money to buy even more lands to, to, to build the oil palm business? We don't know. But meanwhile, the oil palm price is not actually palm oil price is not actually moving higher even when U.S. dollar is falling. That goes to show that you know the industry is well supported by uh, uh, enough harvesting so that you know the price did not translate into uh, into into higher U.S. dollar even though the U.S. dollar has actually fallen. And on top of that, right now the ringgit is strengthening against the US dollar. So in terms of ringgit terms, you may not see the kind of uh, greater revenue as previously. Yeah, don't be mistaken. I'm not saying palm palm oil is actually a, a sunset industry, but using Asia media as in as an example, that company stock is uh, very share the similarity to a sunset stock. So it's just we just have to see whether that venture into palm oil will pay off handsomely much further down the road or you know they will they will still be languishing in the in the lower bottom of the table when it comes to the price i see so the next question is how about the cigarette industry like uh, british american tobacco will it be replaced with electrical cigarette vape i think um that will be very hard to do okay because um electric um electric uh, all those e-cigarettes and so on you know it could be it could be just meeting the kind of uh, segment of the crowd who are transitioning away from the normal tobacco but those people who are entering into the new people entering the tobacco uh, consumer as cons as consumer they are also growing yeah so i i don't think tobacco would be a, a sunset kind of thing because um um there's always new groups of people entering into it. Mm, yeah, now very stressed. <laughs> the many people in getting increasingly stressed, so they have the result of Tobago. So yeah, how will online gaming, online gambling affect the business model of Majaya Toto and Magnum? Will these two stocks suffer and become a sunset stocks? I think any gaming stock will not be a sunset stock, lah, okay? Now it is it is it caters for a different kind of thing. Now, if let's say you are you are pay, playing um, uh, the jackpot machine online and so on, sometimes what people is missing is the uh, is the environment. Okay, so people may continue to go to the casino. Okay, but okay, if let's say people are buying numbers. Okay, you still physically go to the Go to the go to the shop to buy the number for um the you know for the number forecasting, you know right now this number forecasting service is not available online in Malaysia. So if you need to meet that kind of satisfaction, okay, for that gaming need, okay, then people will still go there. As long as I think gaming is an industry that never dies because gaming has been around for thousands of years. Whether we whether it's this kind of uh, related as gambling 
or you know uh, something that you know is a people take a chance okay in order to attain a certain uh, greater value okay mm, yeah especially in our Chinese blood right <laughs> 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 all right so yeah. uh, how much is um, blockchain technology affect the uh, banking business model um how much is affecting i think if you if you read the kind of um news coming out from the imf and from the federal reserve uh gives you an indication that the central banking system are quite uh, worried about uh, the blockchain technology for example christine lagarde did say um uh the the central banks need to come up with a solution uh because um bitcoin is really a viable uh, viable uh, currency okay and then we have uh, this uh, former Fed chairman uh, Bernanke uh, who says that um, he, uh, he likes this particular ripple blockchain uh, uh, this particular ripple cryptocurrency so they are coming out to, to put in certain certain statement that highlights that you know they are supporting the cryptocurrency but it's better that banks come up with their own cryptocurrency or crypto tokens and so on and what is happening in russia recently that they already have a blockchain technology that that is used for the ruble mm -hmm. yeah so if blockchain technology will become mainstream and people transact through the blockchain without going through intermediary like banks then i think it will affect the banking stocks so that's yes, in, definitely. in my, my opinion so yeah actually there are still a few more questions on cryptocurrency but I will just keep that so um, by uh, the next question is by knowing the print media as sunset stock however there are still fund institutions accumulating the particular stock time by time is there any logical behind behind it? Um, I think most importantly some sometimes people like to follow the uh, major institutions okay to uh, uh, when a particular company announced, okay, we have, uh, let's say, EPF buying so much of, uh, buying so, so, so uh, this amount of our shares, okay, and so forth. So sometimes people follow that kind of institutional behavior. Now, print media would be constantly, uh, will constantly be challenged, okay, because people now are moving away from the normal uh, physical printed magazine or printed uh newspaper as a source of information okay the older generation will still resort to this okay now if you go to any coffee shop or whatsoever look at the people who are reading the newspapers you will see that they belong to that news group but you won't see a young person looking through the newspaper so there's still a market for that kind of print media but the next evolution of that of the of the so-called the e-generation right now okay they are really transitioning away from that physical newspaper so a lot of consumer behavior and also you can see in simple things like i share with you about the people looking at handsets on board of a public bus or public transport system the people who are in the coffee shop who are really reading newspaper who are these people who are what are their age group you will see that most of them are actually the older people okay but the young people they are finding information on their handsets so that means that you know there's still a market and that's why because of there's still a market okay and you will see that some of the pre media they are transitioning into you know having certain land okay which they can can they actually develop okay and so forth so that that is how some pre media are diversifying into property and so forth okay so that they it is not become the single income source as previously was yeah okay so the next question is on the retail. Uh, and uh, one shopping mall has about a few hundred shops and it's quite hard for them to change all the shop to become a food and beverage outlet. So how do the management overcome this? Uh? Um, this is Malaysia to a certain extent. We, are, we haven't reached a stage where, you know, there's an explosion of online uh, uh, retail demand because I think Malaysians still like to feel stuff you know they like to try stuff you know versus the the the, the kind of explosion of uh, online shopping in china and in us and in us in particular you know um, the amount of stores closed this year is you know 
20 or 30 percent higher than the total amount of stores closed during the global financial crisis. So this is uh, showing a, a drastic change in consumers' behavior, okay, and in China as well, okay. You you see you 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 see that most of the shopping malls, uh, right now they are moving towards the F and B business. But in Malaysia, you know, there's still a demand for this kind of physical store simply because people in Malaysia people we like to feel we like to touch. You know, even when we go to a fruit store, they say please don't touch. We still like to poke our, our finger on the apple, okay, or press the grape to 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 see whether it's it's what we want or not. It's it's our nature, okay, you know. Uh, you, know, you you go to fruit store, you say please don't touch. You know, you see all the all the apples. You know, suddenly have a lot of hole. You know, a lot of fingerprints on it. You know, depression on the apple is our nature. So Malaysia is still have not still reached that stage whereby there will be an explosion. Okay, towards online. Okay, but it's steadily happening. When you look at the amount of people that book online for travel and hotel accommodation, you know we are even in taxi people we are now moving to Grab and Uber and so on. Okay, so when it comes to this kind of services, you know, we are already moving towards that. So that is why um, you will see lesser travel agency, okay, and, um, and, and travel agencies cannot expand into physical store and they are just, you know, be becoming, they, uh, in certain areas, they become a one-stop center to produce, uh, to, to process visa for you, you know, blah, 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 and so forth. But you don't see it. Uh, uh, you know, a particular brand of a um, particular brand of a uh, travel agency opening everywhere, all around the shopping mall, and so on, because there's no demand for people are doing it online. Yeah, so that that is the change. You know, Malaysia are changing towards that in terms of the travel, and you can see the difference. Okay, there's more people moving towards Asia, Asia X, Asia than into MAS. Mm. Okay, because. The price difference is already it's already shown you know much much is a, unable to 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 grow its revenue base on a much stronger platform simply because people are moving towards cheaper airlines okay it's okay i don't want the frills i don't want to have meal you know if i'm just traveling one hour or, two, or or three hours i can i can do without a meal okay i can eat before i travel then when i reach there i eat again okay rather than you know having a meal on board you know what was the difference Okay, it's not it's not a big difference, and people because of that difference, people are not willing to pay that kind of price. But we are seeing a transition where it comes to travel, and pretty soon, as the new generation matures, they will be very focused towards online and be on mobility, and that is when it will affect the physical retail store. Mm, yeah. So since you are a REITs expert, a real estate investment trust expert, so would you see that shopping mall REITs as a sunset stocks? I won't say that it's a sunset stock because I believe the management of the REIT will have all the uh, traffic coming to the store. Um, they will have the necessary research to know what are the trends in the consumer behavior, okay? And then they will change accordingly. Because if, that, if they have a price asset, rest assured, the property managers will milk every square foot of that asset okay they will not allow that asset to fail okay yeah, but yeah. you can you can already see it uh, um in terms of shopping read uh, the best is i always like to use the example as ibg read in mid valley you can see that IGB. mid valley uh, yeah uh, yeah the igb read yeah. you can see at mid valley they have an entire store dedicated just for food and beverage you know the lower ground floor even Pavilion, the lower ground floor, is already showing that they are the ones that are moving, uh, moving towards the new demand, which is food and beverage, because there is a demand for that. You know, no one wants to stay in their room, you know, in their house and order pizza, Kentucky Fried Chicken, McDonald's every day, you know, or Food Panda, okay, which is actually more expensive. Uh, if you if you continue to rely on that, you know, service charge to deliver the food, rather people won't mind going out, you know. Assuming you're on a date, don't tell me you ask your girlfriend to come to your apartment and then you order food panda. No, you know, you want to have a good time because after the after the dinner, maybe you go for a movie and something like that. So that's the that's the fam family behavior, you know, that eating out always followed by something else. Okay. And normally it's entertainment, okay, rather than shopping. Mm.
Okay, excellent. Well, well, we have come to the end of the webinar today. All right. So thank you so much for paying attention and asking us many questions that is, I think is worth exploring. And um, so I believe today we have covered most of the uh, characteristics of Sunset Stock, what caused it to become a Sunset Stock, and the risk of investing in Sunset Stock, hoping that it become a turnaround stock. And I think it's, by understanding management, it's really important for us to know whether they are ability, whether they are able, they're competent to turn around it or not. Okay, if investing sunset stock is really risky, so unless you have a big appetite for risk, then I advise you to stay away from it. But by understanding macroeconomic trends, you will be able, uh, by understanding macroeconomic trends, of, of course, in, a te uh, in a terms of change of government policy, of any change, will bring about new opportunity and also will bring about threats. So you need to understand it well so that you won't become a victim when it comes to uh, stock market investing. So now, next webinar we have for you is about uncover the myth of the oil and gas industry. So in this webinar, we will cover the qualitative aspect of oil and gas industry because it's not it's so easy for us to understand the operation. So when you join this, you'll be able to understand oil and gas industry because oil and gas is also part of the one of the biggest economy in Malaysia. So they will happen in 5th December 2017. It's a Tuesday from 8.30 to 10, 10 o'clock. So you can register through the link that I've shared in the chat, chat room. So yeah, with that, thank you everybody for paying uh, attention in this webinar. And I want to thank you for um, spending the evening with us. And if any questions, you can write to uh, us on the webinar. With that, uh, thank you very much and have a pleasant rest of the day. Yeah, thank you very much yeah. uh, for listening in. And thank you, Shane, for being the coordinator. Good night. Yeah, thanks, PC. Bye bye, everybody.